hello students uh, today we are going to learn about indian women in anita noya's novel lady scope so indian women have gone through a quiet revolution contrary to popular belief a large number of indian women work though the society has a decisive patriarchal outlook women are more assertive now and definitely play a positive role in the country's march towards economic progress indian women were subject to secondary position in the family setup the man has the upper hand since he is more often than not the principal breadwinner of the family in the past Indian women had to contend with the secondary role compound with illiteracy malnutrition maternity deaths sati and dowry malnutrition female infanticide subculation in a family setup due to the practice of dowry continue even today yet women are now pushing for their fair share on the subcontinent rising literacy better laws to protect women a media friendly image and a woman's will to fight the odds against them to have made all this possible and so anita nayar's lady scope is the for relevant since it is the story of women search for strength and independence is a part of the political instability which affected indian society at large along with myriad other influences which have affected culture language and social patterns which women's literature india has a world to show common experiences a sense of sisterhood and a range of female experiences that questions the recurring of a face of patriarchy this paper aims to point out the evolution of indian women through the characters portrayed in lady scope it is also points out the liberty attained by women in spite of their uh, situation in the indian diaspora these are women belonging to diverse uh, social strata Anita Nayar was working as a creative director of an advertising agency in Bangalore when she wrote her first book a collection of short stories called Satri of Subway was sold to her and in press the book won her fellowship from the uh, Virginia Center for Creative Arts her second book was published by Penguin India and was the first book by an indian author to be published by picarder usa lady scope was published in 2001 looking back towards the mid 19th century more and more women began to write in english some of them such as rakia hosanin created a world of feminist ideologies In Sultan's dream she talks about a world dominated by women a world which has imprisoned a man in a male of equivalent of uh, women's quarters she creates a world that is much better than the one man managed in her women's world there are uh, no wars and there is no constant scientific progress and love for environment women's writing in the 20th century moved towards a medium of modernism in which womanist and feminist statements were combined with political messages the writings of women such as hamsa kanbaid uh, and honest impression of world of a professional women whose career in television and stage segregated the mass class part yet subjected them to the same brutal brutality and force of patriarchy in her autobiography hamsa talks about her life as an actor from the age of 11 her marriage to be a suspicious and 
abuse has been the birth of her daughter her life after eloping with another man the imprisonment she faced at her home along with two of his other wives and her rape by a justice of peace so in the novel ladies who pay is the story of a woman's search for strength and independence the center character is agilante swery agalia for a short 45 and single an income tax clerk and a woman who has never been allowed to live her own life always the daughter the sister the aunt the provider until the day she gets herself a one day a one way ticket to the seaside town of kanyakumari a gloriously alone for the first time in her life and determined to break free of all that her consecutive tamil brahmin life has bound her to and so when anita nayar was asked about her heroine how do you t5 the agilya agalya the main character in the book she replied she is a typical of the generation not many have the courage to break away you get suck into the what takes to be akalyo in some sense of enjoying being a matayo she is not exceptionally strong woman she is just somebody who has scope all she wanted was to be a good wife and mother it is a typical south indian dream especially for women of that generation agalyo is 45 year old Noya goes on to celebrate how she got the idea of book initially until 1998 in Bangalore station where was always a separate line for ladies senior citizens and handicapped so i often used to wonder why they are being clapped together why women are being treated like this The book is about why women insist on using this line. When 15 year old I was traveling in Ladies Hope, the woman around me began talking that I was on the top berth. There is an atmosphere of intimacy that comes in. People talk more openly to strangers. There is no judgment. in the intimate atmosphere of the ladies who pay which she shares with the five other women agalya gets to know her fellow travelers johnny he pampered his wife and confused mother margaret santhi a chemistry teacher married to the poetry of elements and the insensitive tyrant to self absorbed to recognize her needs prabha devi the perfect daughter and wife transformed for life by glimpses of swimming pool 14 year old sheila with her ability to perceive what others cannot and marikolind whose innocence was destroyed by one night of lust as she listens to the women's stories akalya is drawn into the most private moments of their lives seeking in them a solution to question that has been with her all her life can women stay stay single and be happy or does a woman needs a man to feel comfortable or complete the novel does not answer this question on the contrary we are left to make our own decisions however the novel does set us on the path of thinking whether indian women can be single and happy since traditional has for countless centuries bound them to the marital hearth being a woman means marriage and children and her only salvation lies this being constituted to flames by her own son to quote the well known indian sayak manu her father protects her in childhood her husband protects her in youth and her sons protect her in old age a woman is never fit for independence given this percept since time immersible in memorial women have been confined constrained and they have rarely had the chance to make decision or lead their lives independently till very recent when winds of change have fanned a different millennia in the subcontinent 
in this millennium of which noya tries to capture in this novel the novel revolves around akalya who is 45 year old spinster who has spent her life being a daughter a sister an income tax clerk and a provider in fulfilling the expectation of her family akalya has forgotten to live for herself that ties of her tradition have always pulled her back checked her in mind stride when whenever she has tried to make her way towards freedom basically agalia has spent all her life for others she was forced to take care of others since her father had an intimacy and dismay and there was really no one else to be the family's bread winner at the age of 40 agalia realizes that she has allowed life to pass her by and she needs to find some pleasure for herself her ascertain comes in from form of journey she buys a ticket to the deep south to kanyakumari the southern tip of india this is the turning point in her life this innocent Women is out of for an adventure but the real adventure is taking place with her for she is discovering herself her quest to her and a man then throws up the question whether a woman must have man to be really happy in her life the indian woman normally goes through life with marriage and children as a necessary corollary she rarely asserts her individuality and it is almost unthinkable for her to spend her time alone marriages are arranged and even today the indian marriages sport rights on the web like uh, bharat matrimony and sadhi how uh, uh, looking for a right spices as a reader we can very well question akalya has soldier uh, the heavy responsibility of looking after her family for a long time she has been successful in what she is an essential male dominant environment she is strong and assertive on most occasions if she is looking for a man now to complete her life does she really needs one when anita noyer was questioned about the issue of gender in her novel she replied the novel brings into focus yet another important factor as a point in and the novel agalya's mother on becoming a widow herself the mother pushes the daughter to become a bread winner and take on the role of her husband a man thus agalya ends up being very confused and sense of loneliness takes hold of her for she knows that she is lonely without a life partner besides she look on many roles as a sister or any aunt but she never really realized herself in fulfilling her family duties she forgot that she was an individual who had a right to live for herself she needed to search for her essential self she also needed support and consolation her craving for companionship and emotional support become insignificant factor the themes of loneliness deprivation and suppression run through this novel a dream of getting married and leading a normal life remains a dream at one point in the novel agalya waited for amma or narayan to say something to broach the subject of agalya's marriage when they didn't agalya saw out the hurt agalya's family didn't understand her they had accepted her support and even willed her to support them financially but they refused to recognize the fact that she may want to have a life of her own even the simple decision of deciding what she wanted to eat was denied to her being a prominent one of the higher caste among us to the hindu undu religion she was per- forbidden to eat eggs but she was curious and was introduced to the taste of an egg by her friend catherine amma her mother is forced to accept this was when she has no other choice so male domination in the world makes the reader aware of hardship faced by single and married women in south asia culture 
South Asian culture, a single woman is rare in Titan in this culture and society would like question why and how she continues to be single. Why should a woman live by herself? There is always a man who is willing to be with her. Being alone is something alien and not accepted in the society. It is also equally ironic that married women are often subjected to be dominated by their husband and to be break free from this domination is an ordinance and often impossible job. So, is coercive and stifling in this atmosphere all these women she thought Janaki, Sheila and even Mordred who wears her self-sufficiency as a halo are trying to make sense of their ex- existence. I am uh, the same. I am trying to define the reality of my life, justify my failures and my own sense of hopelessness. Domination by family members and loneliness have become an essential ingredient of life of South Asian women. This loneliness and alienation depends with the time and seems to be defied solution. Not only Akalya, almost all characters experiences the domination in one form or the other. Johnny, his husband, is self-centered and egoistic. She had lost her identity in trying to be perfect wife. Her marital life doesn't bring her any fulfillment. He touched, he stroked, he cursed and fondled and yet all Johnny he felt was locking within the succinct prose conjures a word picture of the helplessness of the hapless wife and her situation, the midlife crisis of the married woman who has allowed a life to pass her by is exposed in the description of Janaki as a woman who had gotten to a certain age. The midlife crisis of the married Indian woman is portrayed aptly. She doesn't even realize that much of her life is over and she has probably not thought about it much till that time that she could have lived her life in any other way than she had. Sheila, yet another passenger who travels on the train with Akalya, is a young in her teenage. She carries out the wishes of her grandmother, defining the beliefs of her family in the process. Margaret and the passenger on the train experienced suppression and domination in her marriage. She was persuaded to have an uh, abortion by her husband. Her husband is insufferably dominating and egoistic. He disrespects Margaret. At one point, he de-regards Margaret by insulting her in front of friends and saying that she was not a great one for discussions and that she didn't have an opinion about anything. On the other hand, Prabhadevi finds herself caged in her marriage and is looking for succor. Prabhadevi is seen as another victim of male domination. She feels lost after being married for many years. She asks herself, what do I should sound like? The writer has used the simple of uh, swimming as a way for Prabha Devi to break free from the bondage in which she is caged. Probably the most pathetic is the case of Marikolundu. Her mother works as a cook for rich city of Slander Janri. She is poor and deprived. When she is trapped, she doesn't get any justice. When she decided to take care of the bastard child that was born to her, so her family refuses to take care of her, that she is subject to hardship and alienation. Women like Marie Kolundu not only face poverty, alienation, deprivation, they also face problems of caste dis- distinction. Indian society is a class conscious. Marie Kolundu's mother toiled in the Chetio's kitchen and cooked food for the family, but her status in life was akin to a piarchy dork. When Chetio's brother raped Marikolundu, there was nobody to reprimand him or pull him up. Bringing him to justify was something unheard of since he was rich.
the man women relationship is probably the most intricate one and the author shed some light on through it must be admitted that most of the novel is written from the point of view of the women men seems playing secondary roles yet they play an important role in the women's life for they subjugated her to this level in this context novel have been question whether she is feminist but she replied I, i was not thinking about gender i had a story to tell i was exploring certain issues that were important to me so ladies who pay is the novel about women in south asia but it talks about universal factors in the man woman relationship it explores the theme of alienation loneliness and lost opportunities it delves into subjugation and dominance within the portrayal of marriage it could probably be termed as a defined novel since it seeks to analyze the emotions of single as well as married south indian south asian women it could be a poach to making for the steam has not been explored by many writers of subcontinent and inside your slate six no ask other these women are on the threshold of liberation if we take liberation to be freedom from bondage be it of mind or body So Narendra Roy is the god of small thing her heroine breaks free from the portraits of marriage and seeks salvation in the arms of another man even though he is low caste paravan and untouchable while Roy a single heroine finds a love and the married woman seeks a different way out of their difficult marriages the wings of change have certainly been banned in the indian social scene where it will lead them remains to be seen